Welcome to the Friday Casebook. I'm Lena, a freelance journalist and moderator, and together with Roger Casale, the founder of New Europeans, we are going to find out what happened in the world this week. Hi, Roger. Hello, Lena. I hope you're well. Before we start, please don't forget to subscribe to our New Europeans YouTube channel right here. So, Roger, who or what is the elephant in the room this week? Well, with the COVID pandemic, Lena, so many issues get missed, they get uh, forgotten, or one might say even ignored. And sadly, one of those issues has been the humanitarian crisis in Yemen. Yemen is a country with 29 million people and uh, the, the UN estimates that between potentially between 12 and 13 million uh, are at risk of starvation and already tens and tens of thousands of Yemenis are dying and when we see pictures if you google it you'll see pictures of destroyed cities with children kicking a football around but actually they're not kicking a football around anymore they haven't got the energy to do that the kids they are scavenging for food in uh, in, in in rubbish dumps and things there's a blockade of Yemen and a very serious crisis and then a very important documentary maker Sky Fitzgerald has made a, 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 a what looks like will be an award-winning documentary fortunately because that way people will see it called The Hunger Ward. Sky Fitzgerald has had unprecedented access to the uh, hospitals uh, in Yemen and he has made this documentary and he's borne bearing witness to uh, this uh, terrible crisis and I think probably many of us thought that we'd seen the end of these uh, kinds of humanitarian crisis where millions of people are threatened with starvation. Remember before 2000, there was Ethiopia, going back further, there were famines in Bangladesh and the Soviet Union. I think we thought we'd, we'd seen the, the, the end of that type of mass famine, but we haven't. This is going to happen again in Yemen and it is uh, a, a terrible shameful uh, series of events that are happening there that are preventable uh, and we need to get more of a focus on the humanitarian crisis in Yemen and I hope this film will be one way in which we can do that but we also need to uh, raise it wherever we can, raise it with the European uh, Union raise it in whatever forums we can. It has to become more of a focus of attention. This needs a political solution. It needs peace, it needs an end to the war, it needs an end to the blockade. But there is a very serious danger now of millions of people starving to death before our very eyes. And this is a conflict, this is a humanitarian crisis that is largely, uh, as I say, not forgotten, but actually ignored by the world. And, and that needs to change. What else caught your eye this week? Well, this week has been the launch of the online multilingual digital platform to run in parallel with the Conference on the Future of Europe. And again, we can put the link to the platform. You can try to sign up and make your views known now that the conference is underway, at least the digital platform has been launched. Lena, the platform looks remarkably like uh, the europefuturefringe.com platform and I think that the three presidents of the Conference of the Future of Europe, there they are from left to right, uh, Anna Paula Zacharias, the Europe Minister of Portugal which holds the presidency of the EU Council, in the middle you have Commissioner uh, Suiza uh, who is the responsible commissioner from the European Commission and on the right Kiefer Hofstadt representing the European Parliament. And the platform that they launch looks remarkably like the platform that we set up with Voluntary Europe and European Future Forum a year ago called Europe Future Fringe. Uh, it even has the idea of the map which uh, logs all the different events that people uh, are organising uh, in parallel with the Conference on the Future of Europe and the opportunity, the important opportunity to, for everybody to make their voice heard. So we're pleased with the uh, platform, we're pleased that they have um, 
uh, we think taken on uh, a lot of the ideas that we put across to them over the year. We've been talking to the institutions over the year, uh, over the last year, about how to run the conference. And now, as the, as Commissioner Sweets has said, it's over to the citizens to make their voices heard, to make their views known. And we will uh, explain all that on a link in the chat. If people would like to engage with the Future of Europe, it's open. For, uh, Future of Europe conference is now open for business. Who's on the naughty step? Well, on the North Step this week, uh, we have the uh, we have, we're spoiled for choice because uh, there's been this uh, taken over the news the last uh, 72 hours has been what's been happening in the world of football uh, uh, with the idea of creating a so-called Europe Super League. Uh, and the uh, cheerleader for that was the uh, president of the Real Madrid Football Club, and he's called Florentino Perez. Let's have a look at him. Could have picked several people to be on the naughty step in relation to the story about the Super League, but I picked him because Real Madrid is the one football club that is still part of this European Super League. The other 11 clubs that were supposed to be part of it have all left. And I think somebody needs to explain to Florentino Perez that football is not only a game of two halves, it's also a game of two teams. And you cannot have a European football Super League with only one team, but at the moment, that's uh, what uh, you've got. Real Madrid, as I understand, it's the only team that's still in the Super League, and Mr. Perez still believes that it will happen. Um, I think it's an example of one of the sort of fastest U-turns in history, and I there have been a number of spectacular U-turns this year, uh, not just this one. I, I think the, the bronze medal would go to Ursula von der Leyen for her U-turn on vaccine exports to Northern Ireland. Uh, Angela Merkel, I think, takes the second, uh, the silver medal for the U-turn on uh, shutdown in, in, in Germany over Easter, which she did a U-turn on. Uh, but Florentine Peretz, I think, is uh, top of the list for speedy U-turns. And uh, although actually he's the one who hasn't U-turned, but everybody around him has. But I think it's his it's his fault. So we put him on the uh, we put him on the naughty step, and uh, hopefully we've seen the back of that, that idea. But I'm not sure we have. Who's our star of the week, Roger? Star of the week, Anna Baerbock, the new chancellor candidate of the Greens in Germany. I remember when I lived in Germany many years ago, the Greens were just getting going and it's incredible to see the amount of support that they now have in Germany. I think they're uh, the second biggest party according to the public opinion polls and Anna Baerbock, 40 years old, uh, the new uh, leader of the Greens in Germany, she'll be their candidate for the, for, for the Chancellor. She's, a, she's an LSE graduate and so uh, that's uh, like uh, many of the people on our social media team, Julie and Avelia uh, and Elena and Mia and, and others. Uh, so we can see that she's got a very strong education. But it's rather exciting to have somebody who is uh, uh, very young trying to become the Chancellor of Germany. And I, I, I wish her well. I'm not making a political point, but I wish Anna Baerbock uh, well. But what do you think about it all, Lena? Let's put it this way. I was very glad, to be honest, that she prevailed over her opponent, Habeck, in Germany. But, you know, already there's a lot of critic criticism that uh, she's facing in Germany. And lots of people say that she hasn't gained enough experience in government in the past. How much experience does someone need to have to, to be chancellor? Well, if they're concerned about her not having enough experience, perhaps they should uh, give her the opportunity to get more experience and get behind her and support her. Uh, I think experience is, is valuable and is important, um, but you can uh, have a team of people who have experience and build a team around you. And I'm sure she's doing that. And you can ask people for advice. Um, experience is, 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 is valuable, but you don't need to have had all the experience yourself. There's a way of bringing it in. I think what is also important in politics is uh, charisma and vision and especially energy today is very, very important. And I think that uh, we 
again, I'm not making a, a party political point here, but I, I think if you look around the world today, you see uh, people like uh, again in um, in in New Zealand uh, and uh, Sanna Marin in Finland. Uh, a new face of uh, or Svetlana Chikagoa in Belarus. Uh, you see a new face of, of, of leadership. You see a new energy, a new vision. And I think it's not as if everything is going well the way it is. I think we need to have a change. And I think sometimes uh, that change can be uh, articulated very well by people who are themselves um, not just a symbol, but an expression of that change. And obviously, um, Annalena Baerbock is, uh, is a very talented politician. There are some wonderful politicians in the Greens in Germany. And so to become the leader of the Greens at 40, that says a lot about her political skills and her acumen and her talent. I think people should get behind her and support her. It doesn't necessarily mean to say that she needs, you know, it's not a question of party politics. It's saying that we need to see um, a new face in politics because well, the world needs to change and it needs to change fast. And I think if uh, I think young people, younger people, a new generation as protagonists of change is just what we need. We're coming to an end, but before I want to know what's coming up. So we have uh, Europe Day coming up, Europe Month in May, uh, a month of celebrating uh, Europe. And it starts really on the 5th of May, which is when the Council of Europe celebrates its 72nd anniversary. And we'll be launching the New Europeans uh, new membership scheme on the Steady platform, which you can still access through our website, neweuropeans.net. And uh, that's still under construction. We can have a look at that. We invite you to join us on, on this journey as we build a civil rights movement, not just across the European Union. That's why we've picked the Council of Europe Day, at the Council of Europe anniversary, the 5th of May, because New Europeans operates in the European Union, but also outside the European Union, in Belarus, in Ukraine, in the UK, of course, and indeed internationally. So I invite everyone watching to visit our website and to sign up and to watch out for the launch of our new membership platform on the 5th of May to celebrate Europe Day. Thank you very much, Roger, for this Friday casebook. And the audience, please don't forget to subscribe and <laughs> right, click on this button. <laughs> click on this button just down here. Just See you next week. See you next week.